Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Welcome to today's news update. It's been a busy week in Australian tech news and it seems like there is no stop signs nor speed limits and we have front row season tickets on this one way ride. So let's get started. First off, a public service announcement. Just like many other government initiatives, the no call register just doesn't work at all. And we continue to get calls that are borderline harassment. Can't do anything about them, so remember to just have fun when they call. The longer you can keep a scammer on the call talking about bubble fluff, nothing, they can't scam anyone else. Tell me, have you ever done trading before, Patrick? So, what, what, are you, what exactly are you doing? What kind of trading? Review, review, review about trading experience. It's experience in financial market. Oh, and is this a, is this a, a survey call, is it? Yeah. Okay, and what what com sorry what company was that? Trading Solutions. And how did you get my number? Because probably you have made a registration with one of the trading companies that we are collaborating with, and that's why I'm calling you today to ask you about if you have any experience in financial market and how was that experience? No, actually, I'm I I don't even have access to the internet, so I don't know how I would have signed up. You don't have access to the internet. No, not at all. Why? Are you living in a cave or something? I wouldn't call this town a cave, but, but we but we don't have any internet. Mobile reception is, is all we have. Uh, we get TV. Really? You have TV? Yes, we have TV. Is that black and white? Uh, no, no, it's color most days. If really? if, if there's That's no storm. Nice. Okay, have a nice... So, on that topic, we have SMS scams. Recently, we have seen an influx of these SMS messages trying to get your personal information or simply money for fake reasons. I received a few myself pretending to be a NAB bank, trying to steal my username and password. But that's a futile attempt because I don't even know them myself, probably because I'm not even an NAB customer. And now a new one, an SMS that looks like it's from Oz Post with a link to the Oz Post looking website. The message entails a package that you have received but is detained at customs or not enough freight has been paid and you have to pay the fee. The custom side happens when you import expensive goods or tobacco over the limit, so it's not unheard of but not an extra fright cost. In any case, remember if it looks just a tad odd, it probably is, and it's best to check with the source. They will be able to help you. Don't feel embarrassed if you wanna check if this is a real uh, message or document. They will definitely be there to help. Now, on with the news. News Corp, that is. News Corp's profits are up. They have rebounded from a full year, 228 million profit versus its 1.44 billion losses and that's in US dollars the year prior. And now pouring in a further $200 million into under pressure pay TV provider, Foxtel. Yep, the one and only Aussie Foxtel. With this edition, Foxtel now owes over 500 million American dollars to its News Corp family. You know, at some point you have to wonder how far you wanna flog a dead horse. Now, News Corp CEO Robert Thompson said, at Foxtel, paying subscribers for the KO Sports streaming service more than doubled between the third and fourth quarter to 331,000, while average churn among sports subscribers to the Foxtel broadcast servicing actually fell during the same period. Now, if you're wondering what churn means, it's just how many people cancel at a certain given period. He continued, clearly KO is adding significantly to the total number of sport viewers in Australia prepared to pay for a premium content. A good sign for KO Sports, and like I said before, they need to simplify their offering and streamline their content. Do what they do best and stick to sport. Let go of the stupid contracts that are stopping TV shows and movies from being shown in Australia. It's time to stop strangling us. Because as recent events have proven, it's not a good thing. Last year, News Corp wrote off a 355 million contract for Foxtel Sports Australia's channel distribution on their pay TV side. Now with KO, a cloud platform, this shouldn't happen. Let's look towards the NBN now. The AEC has compiled a report about the internet speeds in Australia. I have left that topic for an actual standalone video in the next few days, so look out for that. But one thing I wanna share with you in this video is this stat. More than one in 10 NBN services are underperforming with fiber to the node being the worst offender. Unfortunately, this was not a surprise for me. We have talked about this in the past, 
The fiber to the node system has many variables and NBN code doesn't want to deal with any of it. The copper cable is half the problem and the biggest issue is in home wiring. Since the news broke a few months ago that NBN Co will be fixing up in home wiring for people uh, for free actually, I have yet to hear that this has started and this report leads me to believe it's nowhere near any type of rollout. Even the ACCC chief called in home wiring a problem that needs to be addressed. Now all of this is also separate to peak time usage. Fiber to the node is the worst technology even in non-peak times. Now interestingly, it was Telstra and MyRepublic who were most affected by the underperforming services. According to the report, kind of surprising because Telstra, well, they used to own those lines. So I guess what comes around comes around. If your fiber is on the node, um, the connection is problematic. Your best recourse is to either A, do it yourself, hire an electrician to rewire your home, or B, nag NBN Co to do it for you. At this stage, I think the homeowners will have to get involved. Uh, I got someone to sort it out for me, uh, my speed doubled and money well spent. I'm very, very happy. So we spoke last week about a lady who owned a small business and she missed out on an NBN connection and being out of a phone line and internet for over six months. Well, folks, I found another article and this week where a family had an NBN connection with Dodo, decided to switch to Telstra and on the day of the switch, which takes around 15 to 20 minutes, I've had it done a few times. On that day, Telstra got back to the family and said, sorry, no go, we can't connect you. I'm finding a bit of a pattern here and Telstra is it. Let me know below if you are a Telstra customer. Have you experienced some ridiculous issues with them? Is this far too common? And on that note, friends, thank you very much for watching this short news update. Hope you enjoyed and if so, leave a like or a comment and consider subscribing for more content like this dedicated to Aussie news. Thanks and goodbye.